I know that you wish that resistance training and cardio were not compatible, but today I am here to convince you that they are indeed compatible and combining both of those into your workout regime is the best thing that you can do for your health, believe it or not. We're going to be covering some scientific studies that analyze the impact of resistance training, the impact of cardio and also their combined impact when an individual implements both of those in their routine. Of course, we're also going to be looking if they do interfere with each other and most importantly if the performance in the gym and the lifts would be very negatively impacted by the extra cardio that one is doing. We're also to be going over some practical tips on how you can combine those in an efficient way and also talk a little bit more about how you can recover more efficiently. So let's get into it. Hello everyone, my name is Clementina. I do health, fitness, nutrition content here on YouTube. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in nutrition sciences and a master's degree in food chemistry recently there is a huge misconception that you're not going to be able to gain muscle if you're doing cardio at the same time and right now we're going to debunk that first of all there is this huge meta-analysis that covers 43 studies done on the topic and they analyzed if resistance training and cardio combined together would have a negative impact on the resistance training parameters i'm talking about hypertrophy muscle mass gains and all also maximum strength. This huge review of all of these 43 studies found that only in some studies the maximum strengths and the explosive lifts were negatively affected. Therefore, if you're doing not hypertrophy but strength training, you might not be able to do the one rep max that you would be doing usually. But this was only when cardio was performed within the same session. So cardio and strength training were performed within three hours of each other and this effect was not observed when both of these were done on separate days. This huge review did not find any negative impacts on hypertrophy or maximum strength generally when they were performed in different days, I mean cardio and resistance training. Now we'll go over a singular study that was talking about the effects of three workout regimes. There was one workout regime that combined three sessions per week between 45 and 60 minutes and it was only a resistance training program with three different days with 12 exercises total. Then the other second group of participants were doing a cardio regime and they were doing some type of interval training for three days a week and the same duration. And the last group was doing a combination of both again with some interval training but a reduced amount of resistance training exercises. And the study found that the improvements in strength were not negatively impacted with the cardio and this comparison was possible because again they had three groups. They had a group that was doing only resistance training, one group that was doing cardio only, and one group that was doing both. But again, the group that was doing both was doing a bit less of resistance training so that they're not overtrained and they were not doing any extra sessions in terms of frequency or in terms of the duration. Moving on from that, another huge body of research, these analysis that combined numerous studies, investigated which type of exercise had the best effect effects on cardiovascular risk factors, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance and also all-cause mortality. This analysis contained studies that were covering again only resistance training, combined training and only cardio training. And they had very similar conclusions to the first analysis that I talked about. While all types of exercise are good and benefits are observed always when you perform some type of exercise, this is why everyone keeps telling you some exercise is better than no exercise it's not always about the duration and the intensity the main thing especially in the beginning is to get into the habit of moving your body back to the analysis here they found that the best benefits with a total reduction of 40% in all-cause mortality and 50% in cardiovascular risk factors were found in studies where the participants were performing both types of exercises in a combination. You see how the research is very conclusive. Again, here one more study that I stumbled upon which went over the cardiovascular risk factors, hypertension, also high blood pressure, this is what hypertension means, and diastolic blood pressure. And they found that the best reductions were again 
observed in a group that was combining both resistance training and cardio training. I also did not like to hear this when I first read it, since if you've been following me for a while, you know that I was on the broke now for it's two months and a half, I think right now, because I'm filming this on the 14th of May. And I was thinking that, okay, I'm going to be stopping cardio now. I used to do a lot of cardio prior to that, actually, in the months of October, November, December, I was doing a lot of running on the treadmill when I went over my stats. I'm explaining all of this to say that I'm not a stranger to running. I had also never properly run outside prior to last week <laughs> because I was only running on the treadmill. I just did not want to run outside. I was very hesitant about it. But right now, as the weather is getting warmer and I also am blessed to live in a city that has green spaces that a lot of people can go outside and run and feel like they're in nature. And since I want to get my daily dose of sunlight, it makes a huge difference in the mood and it would make a huge difference in your mood too, not only because of the vitamin D benefits. Generally, if you went outside more and you looked at nature and just, I don't know, it sounds very basic, but just stood next to grass and in my case water, I love being near water, then your mood improves instantly. You really don't need that much to feel better, but I guess because we're being stuck inside most of the time because of work or university or whatever, you really fall out of touch with these simple things that can make you happy. I think I'm falling completely off track here. But uh, the main point here was I'm getting back into running right now and this is your sign to do that too. It is also very highly accessible right now when the weather is warmer so I am definitely an advocate for just going outside and doing some type of cardio, low intensity, high intensity, you pick whatever you like. One way that you could combine resistance training and also cardio, you could split them and if you've watched my previous video which was about me starting my book and the workout program that I was doing, this is where I also talk about the fact that you do not need some crazy amounts of volume of workouts and also exercises, anything when you're first starting off resistance training or even if you're an intermediate level. You can still build muscle with much lower volumes that do you actually expect. The only thing you need to keep in mind is to have a good workout structure that hits all of the groups that you want to be growing muscle in. So let's say you have a similar program to mine and you just have three resistance training days and on two of the other days you could do some running, walking or cycling. Honestly, if you're doing walking, I guess you could do that every day since it's really not that much of a hassle to go outside for even a 30 minute walk. I know that running can feel more strenuous since it's more high intensity and you don't feel like doing it every day. If you're walking, you might as well just do it for the remaining four days of the week. If it's running or cycling, you might want to have some complete rest days where you do not want to do that. And since it's so accessible and you only need to go outside, I think this is a very sustainable workout program that you can actually stick to, especially right now in the summer. Moving on to one very important aspect, and that is recovery. I tried to find if there were any studies that that talked about how many recovery days do you actually need and I couldn't find anything. I don't know why. It's apparently very subjective. It depends, of course, on the workout intensity and also on your experience level. Some athletes that are used to working out might need less recovery time than someone that is a beginner. The only thing that I found is about techniques that can improve delayed onset muscle soreness. So this is the muscle soreness that occurs not immediately after the workout, but one or two days after the workout workout and it could impact your next workouts negatively in terms of performance. And this study compared different types of recovery methods such as massages and also cryotherapy, other techniques. And they found that massage seems to be the only technique that tends to improve the late onset muscle soreness. Massages are not very cheap if you want to get like a good massure. I'm, I'm not sure what's the word for that. 
what you could do is maybe get one of those massage guns. Two or three years ago, I got someone originally as a gift for my boyfriend, but I think it's actually a gift for both of us. The only thing is that we don't really use it. And I think we should start since it's around anyways. And it's actually a very good technique for recovery, apparently. If you don't know what I'm referring to, I am talking about this device right here just let me unbox it so that you can see what it looks like ah you see how often i use this <laughs> now that i've unboxed this this is what it looks like it has different intensity levels that you can set i usually go on the lowest setting but yeah if you have something similar at your local i don't know health wellness store the way that it works is that you turn it on and it goes like this and you just put it on the areas that are sore there was also one study on stretching as a recovery improvement method but it did not find any improvements in the recovery however stretching is very important for your overall mobility and the prevention of further injuries to improving your mobility and flexibility so i am an advocate for stretching after workouts i try to do this every running session after every running session and i always do this after my resistance training sessions i found that it personally decreases my muscle soreness but this is very subjective and the research here did not find any improvements in the recovery and the evidence in the other study that was about the delayed onset muscle soreness was also not conclusive that it helped however i'm sure that at least one of you has experienced some benefits after stretching and less of muscle soreness lastly there was this paper that i found by accident and this is a about the recovery practices of sub-elite athletes and also some elite athletes they had both male and female athletes so they were like representatives of both groups and they investigated their recovery practices so if they slept enough how they were eating they also documented if they were feeling fatigued also alcohol consumption basically everything and the study found that actually their recovery was really bad of all of the athletes at least bad in comparison to what you would expect from someone that is serious about their workout performance this is because they all reported poor sleep high levels of fatigue and also pain again this applies to the athlete to the elite and the sub elite athlete groups high alcohol consumption was reported in the sub elite athlete group and you would not think that when you hear that someone is a sub elite athlete and has some ambitions my point here is that the simple practices of ensuring a good night's sleep proper nutrition and also not high alcohol consumption obviously are things that you might want to keep in mind and that could lead to you having problems combining both strength training and cardio i think that if you're ensuring sufficient recovery sufficient nutrition and maybe incorporate a massage here and there you're not going to have a problem incorporating both of those of course if you want to be a marathon runner then combining both of those uh, could be an issue for your marathon running performance because you're generally heavier when you do resistance training yada yada but i'm sure that you know that here i'm referring to people that just want to experience the best benefits from their workouts and want to know if doing cardio is indeed that important or if doing resistance training is that important yes most of the benefits are observed also when one does only one type of exercise but doing both ensures that your cardiovascular health is very good and also you have sufficient muscle mass that is very highly metabolically active it is great for your metabolism resistance training is also great for maintaining your bone density as age advances therefore there are so many benefits also the participants in the studies reported best improvements in mental health again in the combined training groups so you see how both types of training really are superior when combined together 
I hope that this inspired you to do cardio every once in a while. But I think that once you get used to it, you really start liking it more and more. In the beginning, it's very uncomfortable because this is something new and your heart's not used to it. But as time progresses, it definitely gets better. This comes from somebody that was very bad in PE when talking about, you know, the set times that you had to reach in order to get a certain grade. Luckily, our teacher were pitting us basically and they would still give us good grades but I was not performing well comparing to the other students I was not very highly active when I was in middle school and I never thought that I could actually go and run outside on my own because I decided to and no one forced me to do that if you find it hard to start doing some form of cardio, find a friend that is into this. I'm sure you have at least one friend that is into either running or cycling or something. They're going to be really happy to tell you more about this because if you haven't noticed, people that do these types of trainings really like talking about it. So you can definitely benefit from that, asking for some tips and stuff. I hope that this video convinced you to implement both types of training into your routine or at least convinced you that you should try it out at some point since Again, it's quite time consuming. Thank you again for watching the video. If you have suggestions for future videos, something that you're interested in, leave them down in the comments below and I would be glad to look into that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content of this video and I'll be seeing you next time.